So, I'm assuming, since you're watching this video, the thought of painting for someone else doesn't make you want to throw up. That's fantastic news. In this video, I'm going to discuss the essential items you're going to need for your first commission. Let's face it. When it comes to painting, there are only two things you really need. Brushes and paint. Since I put this finger up first to talk about brushes, I guess I'll talk about that. When I first started painting, I fell for the trap of thinking that I needed to use the teeniest, tiniest, needle pointiest brushes I could find. Um, now, it's a trap in that you can paint really tiny things, but not for very long. All this led to was just frustration and a lot of wasted paint. And since obviously it was the brush's fault, I went as far as buying Artist Opus brushes and the tiniest ones I could find, the, the super expensive, teeny tiny brushes. Um, surprise, surprise, the problem wasn't the brush. When it comes to a brush, it's important to have a brush with a nice fine tip, but also a big belly. Now the belly is just the, the gathering of the, the hairs or the fibers, if you will. This allows the brush to retain more water and more paint. I didn't know this when I first started, um, so I didn't buy these brushes. The brushes that I highly recommend are Rosemary & Co brushes. I recommend them because out of all the brushes I've tried, they have kept their shape the longest, they're the easiest to clean, they hold the most paint, and they're like six or seven dollars. Um, I have a couple other Windsor & Newton Series 7s in there that I haven't used as often. The Games Workshop brushes I've used, they have in about two months of use begin to fray or have weird things sticking out or like it splits in the middle and I try cleaning it but maybe I'm not cleaning it correctly but for some reason they don't just hold up like the Rosemary & Co's. I don't even use the Artist Opus brushes. Um, they're just fancy and beautiful and they stay in their case. The second only truly essential item we need is paint. Now paint, much like brushes, um, that's preferential. When I first started painting, I loved watching the Warhammer TV um, tutorials with Duncan. Miss you, buddy. Um, and he used Game Workshop paints. Um, so I bought Citadel paints. I bought all the ones because when he was saying, I need this exact paint color for this thing, I liked having that exact paint color. Um, there are a lot of conversion charts out there for like Vallejo or P3 Paint, and but I like Games Workshop. I also like them because they go on consistently and I know how to use them. Now, if you've already begun learning with Vallejo or P3 Paints or other places or the paints, um, then don't change, don't switch. If you're comfortable with them and you know how to use them, then use them. This is all about being comfortable. This is all about using what you have and growing. Now, although I started out with Citadel paints, I have reached out a little bit and branched out and tried getting a few other paints. And I have to say, I like Vallejo's white a lot better. I also like their browns when I'm doing things like leather or wood. So I'm starting to kind of step out of my comfort zone a little bit. And that's good. At, at all different stages, we take different steps. Um, the important thing is finding where you are and taking the steps that you need to take. So now that I've covered the only two true essential items, the brushes and the paint, let's talk about secondary items that I think are nice to have and very useful, um, but again, not necessary. The very first item on this list, and I technically, for me as a painter, would consider it necessary, is a wet palette. When I first started watching all the painting tutorials, and since it was Warhammer TV, I bought the Citadel palette pad, um, just like Duncan used. I didn't have the same results he did with this thing. And um, I'm not saying it's all me, probably 98% me. Um, so I got a wet palette. When it comes to wet palettes, I used Army Painter wet palette. Now again, I'm not getting any sponsorship money or anything like that. No one knows I'm doing this. There's like 40 people that are subscribed to me anyway. If you're one of those 40, six thank you very much i appreciate it that's awesome let's keep growing um 
But I'm just saying that to say, I'm not getting any money. This is just me showing things that I use because I know they work. Uh, and I've tried other things, and this is what's on my desk right now. Um, Army Painter Wet Palette is awesome. I haven't used this thing in probably six days just because of the craziness and the way this commission is working right now. I'm kind of in the building stage. Um, and there's paint in here that's still viable, still usable. Um, and I love it. I love the fact that the paint goes in here and it's usable for so much longer than on a dry palette. Uh, again, I recommend Army Painter Palette. It is fantastic. Pretty cheap, it's like 25 bucks and you get some foam and extra sheets and everything. Definitely, definitely worth the money. Uh, next very helpful item, not necessarily an essential, would be these handles. Um, this is the bigger one for like your dreadnoughts and things like that. And this is a smaller one. And as you can see, I'm working on a flag bearer for my commission. These things are awesome because they hold the miniature so that you're not getting your hand oils and everything is like wiping the paint off. Um, these are nice. I also use like medicine bottles and sticky tack. I mainly do that for like when I'm spray painting or if I'm going to be doing like just tons and tons of batch painting at one time, I could just stick all the guys on there and I grab it and paint, 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 paint. And then at the end, I just pull the sticky tack back together and then throw the paint bottle or the uh, medicine bottles in a Ziploc bag, toss it underneath the thing and I'm good to go. The main thing is to not be handling the miniature because sometimes you stick your thumb right in some wet paint and now you got a thumbprint and it's annoying and it's stupid and I hate it. So getting something to get the miniature up and out of your hand is nice. That way you can also avoid using gloves which just make your hands all sweaty and smell weird. Um, this is a cool little tray here. Uh, it's got spots for the paints and I like using it because it's got the paints that I'm using for the current project I'm working at the time. So it's got a little thing here at the bottom to maybe have the item that you're painting sitting here and it has paintbrush spots in the back. Now that's cool because I have all the things that I need at arm's reach. This is from Gamecraft, I think it was. Um, it's all like balsa or whatever and it comes laser etched and then you just put it together really cool it's like 30 bucks um but it's something that i love and i use all the time i mean this stuff just never leaves it and whatever project i'm working on whatever paints i'm using they go in those spots and they stay there um this is the citadel water cup -da -da. you can just use a red solo cup whatever you want to do now the water is super important because it allows you to clean your brush one thing I would highly recommend is either do your true metallic metals at a separate time or have a metallic metal cup of water and then a regular cup of water. That way when you're cleaning off your metallic metals, you're not also getting it in your brush that you're going to use for like your black. So now the underside of your Marines armor has sparkly bits in his like body glove. Embarrassing and weird. Um, so just, that's another recommendation I have for water. You don't need a fancy cup like that. Um, I just got it because it'll, I saw it and I thought it looked cool. Red Solo Cups work just fine. Uh, as from the old Warhammer TV thing, Duncan used a Mephiston red mug. If it holds water, it's good for getting paint off your brush. Which leads me to the next thing. Now that your paint brush is wet, you use paper towels to dry it off. Paper towels are awesome for drying off your wet paint brush. They're also awesome for getting off the excess paint for dry brushing. Um, so just having roll of paper towels over here like I do is very helpful. Oh, um, these are LED strips here. Now I like having LED. I used to have a big boom arm LED light. I, I might reinstall that just because I don't think these get bright enough. The lights are nice because it allows you to have a very consistent point of light uh, looking at your miniature. Um, right now, if I were to sit at my desk without these lights on, the light here would hit the back of my head and I would be a giant shadow covering my painting area. So having a light above and even one that you can even bring lower closer to your miniature is nice because you aren't able to see your miniature from the angle that you want to see it. The final tool I want to talk about is airbrushes. Now I have a SOTAR 2020 and I love my airbrush for what I use it for. 
Yes. I love my airbrush for what I use it for. That being said, I don't use it as much as eBay Manager Rescues or some of these other commission painters that they use all the time. They have amazing gradients and transitions and, and OSLs and hotspots that I don't have yet. They're a lot more comfortable and they're a lot more precise with theirs than I am. Right now I use mine for like priming indoors um, or just getting a bunch of base coating done. Now because the setup and the cleanup process afterward is so time consuming, it only makes a lot of sense for me to do it after I have like 20 or 30 models need to be primed or a couple of vehicles. Um, that way I'm really cutting down the time and making it more effective. If I painted for every single model, it wouldn't be worth it. I might as well just dunk it in prime or base coat and just spin it around until it dries. It would have less time in it, even fixing all the problems and then repainting the walls and whatever. It's hypercritical that you clean your airbrush after every time you use it. Um, if you let it dry, it's such a pain and you got to tear it everything apart and you got to clean it and scrub it and it's just a nightmare. It's much easier to do it when everything is still kind of wet. You just run your cleaner through it, you disassemble it a little bit, run some cleaner over the needle um, and then reassemble it and let it dry somewhere. So for me, I use my airbrush for a little bit of highlighting accents, but mostly just base coating or priming. So in this video, we've discussed the essential items as well as a few items that might be nice to have. Next video, we're going to discuss what happens when you actually get your first commission. A few things you want to keep in mind, a few things you want to plan for and schedule, and how you want to go about communicating with the customer so there's not a lot of confusion and that the likelihood of your models coming back to be fixed is taken way, way, way down. So Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate this. I hope this series is helpful to you. If it is, leave a comment below. Always subscribe, click the bell icon because I'm hoping that this series kind of picks up and allows me to make some more videos like this as well as some how-to videos, especially documenting my conversion process on a lot of my miniatures. Again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for taking interest in this. And if you're one of my faithful 46 right now, you guys are awesome. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much and have a great day. And I've been chilling, watching the ocean with you. Baby up with a slow motion crew. And we up in the clouds when people change, but not us. And we just chilling, kicking it, kissed by the sun. Could be soaked to the skin.